service friends were on page six. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Like there is one body and one spirit. There is one hope to which we are Be with you. Friends, would you please be seated? Over the long history of the church, ordinations have happened in all kinds of different ways. As you know, there have been times when the church has been an illegal organization or institution. There have been times when bishops have ordained people in prison camps with just the two of them there and so on. There have been days, and I know those days, when upstairs we've had thousands, literally thousands of people in the church for a huge and a great celebration. And that's what I was looking forward to when I heard that we had 25 deacons to ordain. And we spoke, my third dean, the uh, canon miles and then we spoke, how many people could we get in? The church seats 3,000. Would we get them all in? Those were the questions we were asking. Um, it feels like a long time ago. And now here we are with 13. Who, who is it important to have here? It is important that God should be here. And God is here. It is important that the candidates should be here. You whose sense of calling to the mission of God began inside you or began when someone in the church gave you a nudge and you let it grow inside you and then you, you came along and showed it to the church and the church scrutinized it and looked at it and affirmed it. So you need to be here. It wouldn't work without you. And I need to be here, not because I'm anything special, but because as a bishop I represent the wider church the church way beyond the diocese, the world church, the church that affirms your ministry, not just for this diocese, but for everywhere. And it's good that the archdeacon is here, and it's good that Canon Mike is here, because they represent the College of Presbyters of our diocese, those people whom one day you will join after your diaconate, they represent the family of ministers. And it's good that Leah's here because she represents the care which has been given by her to you in the spiritual preparation for this service. And it's good that Simon's here because basically he and his team do all the work. Sometimes I feel all I need to do is rock up and look beautiful. It's not easy for me but I do my best. And you're here, friends, and I'm looking over the top now of the ordinance because of your love for these people, because you know them as colleagues in the church or members of the family or long-standing friends. You're here to surround them with love. We do have more people here than we need. Millions of angels and saints are watching. So it's really quite a big service. And at the heart of it is the relationship between these three and the Lord God and the church affirming that relationship and commissioning them for ministry. So when I ordain each one of them, whether you came to support one or the other, please pray for each one so that they know that this whole church is praying for them as they begin their ministry for the whole church. God calls his people to follow Christ and forms us into a royal priesthood, a holy nation, to declare the wonderful deeds of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. The church is the body of Christ, the people of God, and the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. 
In baptism, the whole church is summoned to witness to God's love and to work for the coming of his kingdom. To serve this royal priesthood, God has given a variety of ministries. Deacons are ordained so that the people of God may be better equipped to make Christ known. Theirs is a life of visible self-giving. Christ is the pattern of their calling and their commission. As he washed the feet of his disciples, so they must wash the feet of others. Bishop Paul, I present to you Sandra Jones to be ordained to the office of deacon in the Church of God. She is to serve in the Church of Wigan, North East. Bishop Paul, I present to you Chris Dunbar to be ordained to the office of deacon in the Church of God. He is to serve in the Church of Upholland and Dalton. Bishop Paul, I present to you Fran Humphrey to be ordained to the office of deacon in the Church of God. She is to serve in the Church of Wigan Southwest. Have those whose duty it is to know these ordinances and examine them found them to be of godly life and sound learning? They have. Do they believe them to be duly called to serve God in this ministry? Do you believe that God is calling you to this ministry? I do so believe. I invite Archdeacon Mike to confirm that the ordinance have taken the necessary oaths and made the declaration of assent. They have duly taken the oath of allegiance to the sovereign and the oath of canonical obedience to the bishop. They have affirmed and declared their belief in the faith which is revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds and to which the historic formularies of the Church of England bear witness. Friends, if you're comfortable standing, would you all please stand? Let us pray for those to be ordained and for the ministry of the whole people of God. God, our Father, Lord of all the world, through your Son you have called us into the fellowship of your universal church. Hear our prayer for your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry each may be an instrument of your love, and give to your servants now to be ordained the needful gifts of grace. Through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Do please be seated. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, he had put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Friends, do please be seated. I'm not entirely sure why these bells keep ringing. Does anyone know? It is, um, it's lovely to have them. They can hopefully drown out the sermon. There's a book uh, written by uh, a Methodist called Gordon Wakefield about uh, the way in which the passion of Jesus, Jesus' salvation of us all, is expressed in St. John's Gospel. And in there, he tells of another Methodist minister who has a dream. And in the dream, this minister goes to heaven and sees the museum in heaven. There's a museum there. And he goes in and he's browsing around the museum. There's an attendant there. And he can see three nails. He can see a cup and a plate. He can see a whole range of things that he remembers reading about in the Bible. And then he turns to the attendant and he says, um, I can't seem to find a towel and a bowl. And the um, attendant says, well, no. There is a towel and a bowl here in heaven, but we don't keep them in the museum. You see, they are in constant use. And the Methodists woke up. Of all the images that sum up not just Christian ministry, but the Christian community, the towel and the bowl are in constant use. 
In this diocese, when I get to heaven, I'm sure I'll be let in for this. I have doubled the number of archdeacons. St. Peter will say to me, what did you do? And I'll say, now we've got four archdeacons. And he'll say to me, come in, thou good and faithful servant. But when we, when we gave each of the archdeacons their license in the, in the church upstairs, I also gave them, each one of them, a towel. Because I said to them, it is the deacon's ministry that you will manifest, even though, of course, they're all priests too. But once a deacon, always a deacon, the towel and the bowl are the image of the Christian community supremely. Deacons, as I have said to you in the charge, are called above all things to reach into the forgotten corners of the world so that the love of God may be made visible. And I spoke to them just a few days ago about the need uh, for them to remember that they are transparent, that they are transparent, but usefully so, like a pair of glasses, that by looking through people, you see where they focus, and if they are Christian ministers, they will focus on Jesus. And by looking at the humanity of these and the others, you will see Jesus focused. And today, that image, the image of transparency, is complemented by what it says in the epistle, this incredibly famous passage in Philippians, where speaking of the Lord Jesus, the writer says, Jesus emptied himself, taking the form of a slave. And I want to speak just for a moment about emptiness and what it means for you, friends, to be empty. The church sometimes gives altogether too much glory to its ministers. We honor you and we thank you for your ministry, but what matters most about it is not the way that you filled yourselves up with all that training that you did at college or on the course. That's not what matters. What matters is that you're ready, like Jesus, to empty yourself and to take the form of a slave. And right across the, Christ, the, the traditions, the religious traditions of the world, not only the Christian one, the idea of being empty, and the idea that being empty is a good thing, that is universal. So in the Zen Buddhist tradition, there's a famous story of uh, someone who comes, someone who's a bit of a kind of religious groupie, who comes to a great Zen master and says, uh, teach me what I don't know, I need to know lots more. And the Zen master makes the person a cup of tea and gets the teapot and pours the tea into the, into the little bowl and fills it up and then keeps on pouring and the thing is overflowing and going all over the table and making a mess. And in the end, the person who's come to see the Zen master says, stop, you're making a terrible mess. And the Zen master looks at the person and says, I could not give you any teaching because you were full. In order to be wise, you must empty yourself. It's with that image, that same image, that in reaching for truth, the writer to Philippians reached for that image of emptiness which came to describe Jesus. And you know, friends, but I want to say to you again that if you are to empty yourselves as Jesus emptied himself, that is not the same thing as saying that you are worthless and that everything you've been given in your training and in your life is worthless and that you must demean yourself. Because the same Jesus who knelt at the feet of his friends and washed their feet went on to say, you call me master and Lord and you are right because that's what I am. If I then, your Lord and master, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. The towel is in constant use. And you as deacons in all the different places where you are and will be, you'll be using that towel kneeling at the feet of the people, not because you're worthless, but because you're empty, and because the precious vessel of your humanity 
will be filled with the life of Jesus, the one who emptied himself. So I commend to you this ministry of emptiness, this ministry of kneeling, this ministry of the towel. When you're ordained, you will be kneeling. It will happen to you. Just like for all of us here, if we ever got married, it happened to us. And I said to them earlier in the week, for the benefit of the rest of you here, I said to them, all you need to do is get yourselves here and get your head under the bishop's hands because the church does the rest. They will be kneeling. They will begin their ordination and their ordained life kneeling. And I pray and hope that the rest of their ministry as deacons, which is a lifelong ministry, they will remember that first second when they were kneeling empty. And they will carry that empty kneeling into a world full of people who try to be full, full of loneliness, full of sadness, at this time full of fear and anxiety. And the best thing they'll have to give people is the fact that they don't mind being empty because they know who they are in Jesus and they know that they are loved. And therefore they're cool about kneeling and washing and drying and caring. And they do all that because they have become formed by God's word. So afterwards, in the uh, time-honored way, by the rule of six, you can talk to them outside and you can say to them how proud you are of them, and I hope you will. But you can also say, it's lovely that you're empty. We love you as you are. We love you when you're empty because Jesus can fill you. And I hope that they will say to you, I hope I'm always going to be empty, not worthless, but a precious vessel. And in that spirit, their diaconate will be blessed. Deacons are called to work with the bishop and the priests with whom they serve as heralds of Christ's kingdom. They are to proclaim the gospel in word and deed as agents of God's purposes of love. They are to serve the community in which they are set, bringing to the church the needs and hopes of all the people, 
They are to work with their fellow members in searching out the poor and weak, the sick and lonely, and those who are oppressed and powerless, reaching into the forgotten corners of the world that the love of God may be made visible. Deacons share in the pastoral ministry of the church and in leading God's people in worship. They preach the word and bring the needs of the world before the church in intercession. They accompany those searching for faith and bring them to baptism. They assist in administering the sacraments. They distribute communion and minister to the sick and housebound. Deacons are to seek nourishment from the scriptures. They are to study them with God's people that the whole church may be equipped to live out the gospel in the world. They are to be faithful in prayer, expectant and watchful for the signs of God's presence as he reveals his kingdom among us. We trust that you are fully determined by the grace of God to give yourselves wholly to his service that you may draw his people into that new life which God has prepared for those who love him. And now, in order that we may know your mind and purpose, you must make the declarations we put to you. Do you accept the Holy Scriptures as revealing all things necessary for eternal salvation through faith in Jesus Christ? Will you be diligent in prayer, in reading Holy Scripture, and in all studies that will deepen your faith and fit you to bear witness to the truth of the gospel? Do you believe the doctrine of the Christian faith as the Church of England has received it? And in your ministry, will you expound and teach it? Will you strive to make the love of Christ known through word and example and have a particular care for those in need? Will you be a faithful servant in the household of God after the example of Christ who came not to be served but to serve? Will you endeavor to fashion your own life and that of your household according to the way of Christ that you may be a pattern and example to Christ's people. Will you work with your fellow servants in the gospel for the sake of the kingdom of God? Will you accept the discipline of this church and give due respect to those in authority? Will you then, in the strength of the Holy Spirit, Continually stir up the gift of God that is in you to grow in holiness and grace. Sisters and brothers, you have heard how great is the charge that these ordinances are ready to undertake. And you have heard their declarations. Is it now your will that they should be ordained? Will you continually pray for them? We will. will you uphold and encourage them in their ministry? We will. In the name of our Lord, we bid you remember the greatness of the trust in which you are now to share. The ministry of Christ himself, who for our sake took the form of a servant. Remember always with thanksgiving that the people among whom you will minister are made in God's image and likeness. In serving them, you are serving Christ himself, before whom you will be called to account. You cannot bear the weight of this calling in your own strength, but only by the grace and power of God. Pray, therefore, that your heart may daily be enlarged and your understanding of the Scriptures enlightened. Pray earnestly for the gift of the Holy Spirit.
power of the Spirit and in union with Christ. Let us pray to the Father. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all the members of the church, in their vocation and ministry, that they may serve him in truth and love, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Paul and Beverly, our bishops, and for all bishops, presbyters, and deacons, that they may hunger for truth and thirst after righteousness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For those now called to be deacons in his church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness we may proclaim the gospel of reconciliation to the ends of the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the unity of the church, that we may be one in Christ according to his will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who do not yet believe, that they may receive the light of the gospel, and for those whose faith has grown cold, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and suffering, for the aged and infirm, for the lonely and neglected, and for all who remember and care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the poor and the hungry, for the homeless and the oppressed, for all prisoners and captives, and for our brothers and sisters who are persecuted for their faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Elizabeth, our Queen, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For ourselves, for grace to repent and amend our lives, that we may be pardoned and absolved from all our sins, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remembering our sister and friend Louise, and all who have gone before us in faith, and in communion with all the saints, we commit ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord. and glorify you almighty father because in your infinite love you have formed throughout the world a holy people for your own possession a royal priesthood a universal church 
We praise and glorify you because you sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, to take the form of a slave. He humbled himself for our sake and in obedience accepted death, even death on a cross. We praise and glorify you because in every age you send your Spirit to fill those whom you have chosen, to equip your holy people for the work of ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ. And now we give you thanks that you have called these your servants, whom we ordain in your name, to share as deacons in the ministry of the gospel of Christ, who came not to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Therefore, Father, through Christ our Lord, we pray. Send down the Holy Spirit on your servant Chris for the office and work of a deacon in your church. Send down the Holy Spirit on your servant Fran for the office and work of a deacon in your church. Through your Spirit, Heavenly Father, give your servants grace and power to fulfill their ministry. Make them faithful to serve and constant in advancing your gospel in the world. May they follow the example of Jesus Christ, your Son, who washed the feet of his disciples and set the needs of others before his own. May their life be disciplined and holy. Their words declare your love, and their actions reveal your glory, that your people may walk with them in the way of truth, and be made ready for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom with you and your Holy Spirit belong glory and honour, worship and praise, now and forever. Amen.
So I ask the newly ordained please to stand and take the Bible in your hand which is in front of you. Receive this book as a sign of the authority given you this day to speak God's word to his people. Build them up in his truth and serve them in his name. We preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. We welcome you as fellow servants in the gospel. May Christ dwell in your hearts through faith, that you may be rooted and grounded in love. Friends, if you're comfortable standing, would you all please stand? We're going to share the peace. We can't do it as we usually do with a hug or a handshake. Just two ways you might think of. There's the British Sign Language word for peace, which you do like this. You make your hands like this, and then it's as if you just build a piece of cotton between your hands, just like that. Peace. You see? So you go, peace, peace, and then peace be with you. Peace be with you. So you can do that, or if that feels a bit too much like hard work, you can just wave. <laughs> we're all one in Christ Jesus we belong to him through faith heirs of the promise of the spirit of peace the peace of the Lord be always with you Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. And now we give you thanks that your Son walked in your way with the gospel of peace. He washed his disciples' feet in love and calls your servants to follow in his footsteps. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. 
This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven. We worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise, blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Together with all disciples in this diocese of Liverpool and across the world, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. In a moment, friends, there's the opportunity for you to receive communion only under the form of bread. I'll give communion first to our three new deacons, and then I'll go around and give each of you communion. If for any reason you don't want to take communion, just fold your arms in front of you, and I'll give you a blessing. It will have to be a socially distanced blessing, and pretty well socially distanced giving of communion, so that we may all be safe. Jesus is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, to say the word, to share the healing.
holy and blessed God. You have fed us with the body and blood of your Son and filled us with your Holy Spirit. May we honour you not only with our lips, but in lives dedicated to the service of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of the Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Would you please stand? Our help is in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God who has called you is faithful. May the Father whose glory fills the heavens cleanse you by his holiness and send you to proclaim his word. May Christ, who has ascended to the heights, pour upon you the riches of his grace. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, equip you and strengthen you in your ministry. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, come down upon you all and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.